So what's this formula like? What, how do you determine the EFC? Well, there's actually 70 factors in the EFC. The four I wanted to make you aware of tonight or today are these. The parents adjusted gross income. That's when you file an income tax, that's the bottom line on the front page of your 1040 before you get clever. And the formula want a lot of different things. It'll be based on how much that number is. So if you have a low income, the formula won't want anything. But as you start moving up in income, the formula will want not only more money, but a bigger percentage of your money. So for instance, at $60,000, they may want about eight or 10% of your income. At $70,000, they may want about 12 or 13% of your income, and so on up to six-figure income, where the formula will probably want about 25% of your adjusted gross income. Then they'll look at the assets that you reported. And all you, you, you should never report a retirement asset. They only look at your non-retirement assets. So whatever you put on the form, the formula will want those about 5.6% of those non-retirement assets. If you had $10 in the bank and $10 million in your retirement fund, as far as the college financial aid system is concerned, you have $10 available for college. Then they take a look at your dependent student's income and they'll let the student earn about $3,000 but once you get above that threshold, the formula will go after every single dollar at the rate of 50 cents on the dollar. So if your student earns about $10,000, you can pretty well bank on the fact that that's going to raise the family contribution by roughly $3,000. Then they look at dependent students' assets, and depending on the form, whether it's a FAFSA form or the profile form, the, for the uh, formula will want up to 25% of the listed assets on the form.